Hello and welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair, that vid blaster guy, coming to you with another show all about vid blaster. We ought to just change the name of the show to All About Vid Blaster. Well, but that vid blaster guy is pretty cool too. I'm so glad you could tune in today. Thank you for those of you that are tuning in live. And uh, we welcome you to the chat room. Um, yeah, somebody's complaining that there's no food in the studio, but uh, it's all virtual, so it wouldn't matter. It, it wouldn't put a pound on you. For those of you welcome, uh, watching on YouTube, we welcome you too and, and invite you to subscribe to our channel so that you will get to see all the latest, greatest stuff as it comes down the pike. Oh, and I would mention too, if you go to Eastern Shore Broadcasting, um, you can click on the little link and have your email added to the list because we do send you notices of exclusive video content that might be worth a look. Anyway, that'll be fun. Today's show is going to be great. We're going to talk about VidBlaster's new uh, beta feature, Screen Capture. It's not that new, but it's new enough. We're going to talk about the giveaway contest. We're going to talk about the PC build. We're building a portable PC from scrap. Uh, talk about tally lights a little bit and then something else to close out the show. So it's going to be a really busy show. Lots of stuff packed in. But remember, one guy with one PC can do one awesome broadcast. And that's what this show is all about. Showing you how you can do one awesome broadcast. Now, a lot of you are really experienced broadcasters. You've been doing this for a long time. And my hope is you can, you can pick up at least one tip or trick in this show. For those of you just starting out, a lot of this stuff is just going to be, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. It's way too much to take. But it's like eating an elephant. You eat it one bite at a time. Just take it in little chunks and it'll come. It'll begin to fall into place. Uh, don't, don't lose heart. Hang in there. Um, Vid Blaster. Yes. Good old Vid Blaster. Vid Blaster has got a new beta feature called Screen Capture. Screen Capture. And, you know, I probably ought to show you what it looks like. You know, I, I always forget to set these things up. I am so sorry. Let me set up a, uh, a screen capture that captures just a portion. We're going to use the old version screen capture, which is in the Camera One module. Um, so we'll get out a Camera One module here. We'll set it up for screen capture, and then I'll show you the screen capture uh, module that we'll be using today. So let's put that one there, and then we're going to do a capture over there, and we'll go there. Did that do it? Yeah, that did it. Okay, so you're looking at my desktop, and there is a module here. You can see it's called screen capture. In fact, you can see there's already something in the screen capture window. So let's right click the window and we'll, we'll start again. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of, uh, well, let's just take this window out altogether and we'll put a new one in its place so we can start fresh. To do that, you hold down the control key and the shift key and click modules. And then when you go to add, there are all these new beta features that pop out and they're be in parentheses beta. So that's a screen capture. It just popped up with something in it. Um, it's a module. It's a collapsible module. So you click the little arrow and it'll collapse and you can get it out of the way if you don't want it in your way. If, you have, if your screen real estate is um, a little restricted. If we were going to go full screen with it, we would just left click. Pow! There it goes. Full screen. That Whatever we're capturing right there, that's how it, that's how it works. We just go full screen with it by clicking or left clicking on the mo module. Right click on the module brings up the menus. And in this case, we've got the capture windows, and these are the various windows on my PC that are available to capture. And let's just go to Eastern Shore. Uh, let's uh, what will we go to? Yeah, let's go to Eastern Shore Broadcasting dash Google Chrome. That is a Google Chrome window that happens to show the chat room right now, uh, or at least a portion of it. So if I click on that. It will show you the chat room. It's a little compressed. It's a little wider in, in real life. Excuse me, a little taller in real life. Um, but I think that's that may be one of the little bugs in this new new program. Let's uh, let's go to the tally lights. Uh, oh, and we can't see tally lights because we want to click support hidden windows because the tally light window is actually hidden 
under the chat room. So we're going to go there, and there is Tally Lights, and that's actually hidden. So we also have a chance to see you smooth resampling. So we would select that if we had something that had, um, oh, let's say a bit of uh, motion in it, like some horses or something like that. Transition is our same transition that we get in our cameras and other modules that, that pop things up to the screen. Hard cut, dissolve fast, dissolve slow, dissolve medium. Um, display size allows us to change the size of the display on the screen. So currently it's default, which I think is, a, is slightly less than 25%. And let's see, let's go to, there we go. Uh, we'll move some of these other modules out of the way a little bit. There we go. So let's go back to that. When we said uh, transition, display size is default. That's the default size. Display size 25% is a little bigger. Display size 50% is even bigger. And that's just if we really need to see what's going on in this. A lot of times uh, you can use this in your camera module to put the camera, make the camera modules larger so that you can sit further away and click them maybe with a wireless mouse or something like that. Uh, and let's see, display size 100% is going to be super large. You can see that doesn't actually fit into the, the, uh, the window that we've, we've captured right there. So let's go back to display size. We'll set it back to default, which is less than 25%. And we also have info, which pops up a little info window. Let's see if I can pull that in. Eh, it won't drag. The info window basically says this is a module type screen capture. And if other, other info windows will tell us other things. Um, but in this case, uh, looks like, there we go, we got that released. So let's right click on it, clear, we'll clear it out. So, well, maybe it should, but it didn't, did it? So there's something that's not working quite right in this beta feature. The clear function doesn't work. And then re remove module, we'll remove the module that's disappeared. But let's get it back. So we're going to go up to modules hold down the control key and the shift key, go to add, scroll down to screen capture beta, and here is our little module. So, let's test it out a little bit. We're going to set it up to, to capture the Tally Lights uh, Chrome. And basically, that's just a Google Chrome um, window that I've got up that has the Tally Lights um, website in it. And the reason it didn't pop up is because that Tally Light website is underneath the chat room website. So let's see if we can pull, just pull it up to the top. There we go. Now it's it's on top of the other one. And if we go over, I'm going to take my cursor and actually go over to the actual window, and I'm going to maximize that window. And you can see now that it shows you the full size of the screen. This is the, the Tally Lights website. Let's just pop over to Eastern Shore Broadcasting website right now. That's our website. And you can see there's the website. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit. And you can see what's there. So if you wanted to show a website, this would be a way to do it. Um, we can go to uh, we can go to the Vid Blaster wiki site which is wiki.bidblaster.com and see all sorts of cool information there uh, ta kind of taking you on a tour while we're doing it we can go to the vidblaster forum and uh, see what's going on there looks like there are a couple of folks in the forum right now and let's go to let's get some motion here so let's go to youtube and we'll just do a quick search for uh, running horses. And we'll pick out a video that's got some, some motion of some horses in it. Um, amazing Galloping Horses 1080p. We'll take that one. And then we'll there is little use for the being. Mute the audio there for a second. Let this ad play itself out. Um, this is well. We'll wait for the ad.
to run. It's got another couple of seconds here. There we go. Okay, now our video is set for 480. Let's just leave it there right now. I'm watching it on the screen as it goes, and it's, it's a little jerky. Uh, it's not a very smooth video naturally. Um, so what you're seeing is probably pretty close to what it looks like. Um, I'm going to resize that window and just let it go back to the size it was before, what they call a restore down. And you can see that one of the things that the screen capture doesn't really do yet is it doesn't fall, it doesn't follow down with that. Let's, let's go back and reset our screen capture. And we are going to set it for Amazing Galloping Horses. And now you see it's going to take the entire full window. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to adjust that window to maximum screen size on my PC. And after a couple of clicks and buzzes and whirs, it goes to maximum screen size in the screen capture module. Now I'm going to go back to the restore down button and we'll click that again and see if we can't get it to go to small size. And it goes to small size and now you're just getting the window. Um, so when you first start the module, it will, uh, it, it will go ahead and go up and back like it should. But if you're doing some other things and then come back to it, it might not work correctly. That's a, that's a bug in the system. Let's take this module and we're going to right click it and let me make sure I've got my cursor on the right screen. I've got all these cursors running around here and I want to make sure I get and we'll right click the module and we're going to go to support hidden windows and that means that we can take this module and we can put another window on top of it and so over here on my left, which I guess you can't see because you're not here with me, um, but I'm going to actually cover up that module with another module. Um, and in doing so, I still have that one available. Let's see, let's do a little screen cap here and I'll show you what I mean. Capture selected area. We're just going to capture this area just for fun. And this is what I see on my, my screen. Um, the hidden window is actually below that right there. And it's got a little flash. You can see the little flash there in the very top of the window. That's apparently that, that begins to happen when we, let's go back to this shot for just a second. When I go into support for hidden windows, see the checkbox there. If I were to uncheck that, then the flashing goes away. So that has something to do with the support hidden windows. We'll turn for support hidden windows back on. And you can see um, we've got the, this, even though the window is, is the top window, it's still flashing a little bit. We'll go ahead and put the, um, the uh, Eastern Shore Broadcasting chat room on top of that window. The flashing goes away there, and then when we look at it here on our desktop, um, we see a, a module. In fact, let's go ahead and just make that one full screen. That's what that window looks like. And the window is going uh, 480 right now. So let's see. We'll go back over here. That's where our, our covered window is. It's covered by the chat room, and we'll bring it back up to the top. You can see the little flashing again in the top. This is what the module would look like on your desktop. Well, hold on. Got to be here somewhere. There we go. That's what the module would look like on your desktop. And then that's what the module would look like if you were streaming it. Now, one of the feature requests that I, I think has already been made for this um, is to basically allow us, let's turn off the hidden windows support for just a second, would basically allow us to kind of crop out 
um, some of the extraneous stuff right here so that perhaps we could just crop just the, uh, the video window right here uh, or maybe just the, uh, the, the website window right here without uh, showing all the, the controls. Uh, we're going to go, actually just went full screen on this one and you can see the, uh, the, the screen capture module did not keep up with it. We'll go back to our horse page. This is the original window that we captured. Uh, and then we'll go back to the Eastern Shore Broadcasting tab. And now that tab will display properly. Um, so there's a little, little glitch in that there that has to get worked out. Um, let's go full screen with this right with this one window right here and we'll grab it full screen and it'll take a second to click buzz and whir and get to full screen and the video is is probably about 15 frames a second so what you're seeing right now is is the equivalent of what I'm seeing but the quality is pretty good um, haven't tried it so far as lip sync is concerned you know it's hard to read the lips of a horse so how would you know whether they were in sync or not um, and then we'll come back over here and we'll take this out of full screen and you see we still have the full window we're still capturing the full window but the YouTube video part is not full screen anymore and we can go back to uh, Eastern Shore Broadcasting I was hoping to find and I probably should have looked a little, a little harder I was hoping to find a video that had um, good motion, good smooth motion on it, and apparently I did not um, did not find that. Now the uh, here in the screen capture mo module I skipped over smooth sampling. Uh, Martin is, is saying in the chat room that, that smooth resampling is not just for moving content, it's, it's for getting, getting rid of any sort of aliasing that you see. Uh, so let's, let's give that a try. We'll turn that on. We'll go back to our galloping horses and, uh, and restart that. And come back into our module here. And we'll go full screen with that. It's set for, I think, 720 now. Yep, 720. There we go. And we'll go to theater mode first. And then full screen. And then we'll take that off. In in chatting with uh, with Mike Verstig from VidBlaster on the forum, and I I made this suggestion, not knowing, you know, I don't know a whole lot about this stuff, but I can play with it a lot. I made the suggestion to him on the forum that we might want to make this module one that was smart and could tell how much movement was in the the, the screen that it was capturing and then if it was capturing a lot of movement uh, increase the frame rate and if it was capturing a static image like a website or something like that drop the frame rate down to one or two frames per second and I thought that was a pretty bright suggestion <laughs> but Mike said he'd already done that and it was doing that dynamically so that's that's pretty neat um, but we've got a few notes that we want to add to that in terms of, of how it goes from, from full screen. Or if, if your window becomes resized, how it adapts to that. Sometimes it adapts to it, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm using Google Chrome. It may be that Safari or Firefox or Internet Explorer would work more reliably from time to time. Um, but that is, the, that is the screen capture module in VidBlaster. Now to get to that module, it, again, it's in beta state at this point, so it's there and you can use it, but it's, it's not, not believed to be yet a finished product. Obviously it, obviously it isn't. Um, hold down the shift key, hold down the control key, and then left click the module command at the top of the screen, and then click the add button, 
and then go down, scroll down to where it says screen capture, and then in parentheses it'll say beta. And that'll just pop up the module. And as long as you're not changing windows, um, or changing the size of your windows, rather, it seems to work pretty well. And then, of course, there's the caveat that if you put it in, uh, in what was it called specifically? It was called uh, Support Hidden Windows. If you do Support Hidden Windows, then uh, there's some flashing of the window that you're trying to capture. So uh, just know that that's, that's probably something that's going to be in the works as well. Um, so that screen capture is going to be pretty cool. And again, you know, it has been suggested that a crop feature be added to that, and that would be great if you're going to capture a, a full Skype window and you'd like to be able to, to crop out some of the Skype commands um, or Skype uh, advertisements or whatever they may be. Um, something like that hopefully will be in the works soon. So I commend to you the screen capture module. Uh, have a look at it and uh, you might find it very useful. Not quite as flexible at this point as the old uh, capture command in the Camera One module. And that's the only reason I think the Camera One module still hangs around. <laughs> it's because it has that super flexible capture where it can capture any shape or size, uh, or it can capture presets uh, on a one-to-one, -one, four to three, or 16 to nine ratio, um, which is pretty neat if you want to make sure that you're getting just this amount of the screen. Okay, let's see what's up next. Oh, I know. Uh, we want to talk about our contest coming up in March. We're going to have a giveaway contest. Now, that's two words. Well, more than two words, but two concepts. Giveaway and contest. So it's not really a giveaway. You got to do something. And everybody that does something won't necessarily get something. Although we could do that. We could have a prize for everybody that entered. The idea is I want you to make a video and send it to me. And I want to put it out there for the whole world to see and to vote on. So everybody, and you can call up all your friends and neighbors and say, go vote for my video. And so we'll, we'll, we'll have to dial in exactly what the video rules will be. I'm thinking, and you can help me kind of work through this, I'm thinking it might be fun to, uh, to say that you have to use a, uh, a specific module or combination of modules in VidBlaster and show how they work, uh, demonstrate how they work by doing something in them. And, you know, of course you could do a camera module, but how blasé is that? Um, I want to see something cool with the effects module or, or the overlay module or something. Um, think about it, dig into it, play with it, and see what you can find. So that's going to be coming. We'll probably start the contest about mid-month um, and then take about two weeks to have entries flood in and then make some announcements at the end of the month, at the end of March. So forewarned here, you can, you can, you can win something really cool. Haven't figured out what that would be yet. In the past, we've given away... The uh, VidBlaster Home Edition, uh, a license to the Home Edition, or the equivalent value for folks that wanted to upgrade the VidBlaster they already had. So if you don't have VidBlaster, you can uh, you can earn one in the contest, uh, and you can use the Trial Edition to to put your video together. And if you already own a VidBlaster license, you can help improve that uh, by uh, by winning the contest and winning something. We're not quite sure what yet, but it may be fun. Um, let's see. Uh, coming up in a future episode, maybe next week, we're not sure yet, but coming up in a future episode is going to be a, um, an interview with uh, Ted Kazmierczak, who is the guy behind Tally Lights. And VidBlaster just recently, last week, I think it was, announced support for tally lights and this is not just tally lights generically but the tally light product by tally-lights.com uh, Ted is up in Michigan and has just as of yesterday shipped me down a three light tally light setup with a USB controller 
And he said, Tom, it's as easy as plugging this thing into USB, running what we would call just simple, very basic audio cable, the kind of cable that you would have where you plugged in a set of earbuds into your telephone, except something a little, a little sturdier than that. In fact, you can see it in the picture where it plugs in to the bottom left corner of the lighted module. And, uh, and he said, it'll work. And said, I'll even come on the show as a guest. And I thought, well, you know, you can't beat that. So hopefully, uh, either next week or, or maybe the week after, we're going to have uh, Ted Kazmierczak from Tally Lights to come on and help us demo the Tally Lights. Now that, you know, I won't be able to give him a Tally Light up there in Michigan. That won't be quite the same. But we'll set it up here in the studio and, and show you how that, uh, how that works. Um, also coming up, is uh, we're, we're expecting to see a, what would you call it? Um, I guess we're going to be demoing a product called Live to Air. And Live to Air basically is a standalone PC that will receive four video signals, i.e. guests like Skype, except it's not through Skype, and they will output those four video signals to a PC that has four video inputs. So you can have essentially a, uh, a four channel uh, guest connection by video. And I did a terrible job of explaining that. Um, it's, it's called uh, Neural Net and the product is live to air. And we're going to be demonstrating that in the upcoming weeks, I think. It just depends on when we can get a set down here. They're, they're, they're re reconfiguring them because they're going to take them all off to NAB. But uh, it looks like a pretty neat setup. It's, it's, it's pretty darned expensive. Um, but if you do a lot of guest work, something like this may, may really just fit the bill. Um, so keep an eye out in the future for live to air the demo that we'll be doing here. Um, let's see, last but not least, I wanted to give you a little update on our portable PC build. And if, if you were in on that, we took a, uh, um, a Stream Genie by Pinnacle Systems that was built in the year 2000, and we essentially have, have gutted it, um, and we've taken out all the, you know, the hard drives and the motherboard and the power supply and the three and a half inch floppy drive and all that stuff and so now we want to build it back. Um, one of the things that we realized is that the back plate you can see there, uh, let's see if I've got another shot, there we go. Yeah, the back plate, I've pulled part of it off. It, it used to look like that uh, where the hole, and we'll go back and forth between those two shots so you can see better. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the big hole in the top is for the power supply, and the bottom is the I.O. connections for the motherboard, but of course they don't match up to my motherboard. Um, so I took the plate off, and I need to modify the, the bottom I.O. section of it, and what I want to do is to match it up to the I.O. plate that came with the, uh, the uh, A.S. Rock um, motherboard but that doesn't quite fit right. I thought about, actually, this is a back plate that I took off an old uh, full-size tower that I had, and I said, well, I'll just graft that one in. That should be pretty simple, uh, except the darn thing was too wide. It wouldn't even fit in there, and if I cut it down, it wouldn't have enough stability to, to hold anything in the back plate, especially on a portable PC, so we had to toss that idea up. So what we're going to do, I think, is take the existing back plate and modify it so that we can insert the, uh, the I.O. plate from the, the existing motherboard. It's going to be a little tricky because we have to obviously leave enough metal on all sides for that plate to stick in. Um, this is the, uh, the motherboard that we're using, the AS Rock. Um, it is a, uh, what was it, 1155 um, I think it's either 1155 or 11, 
L LGA 1155 or LGA 1150 motherboard because we're going to use it with a processor that we already have on hand, the i7-2600K. Uh, we're going to strip that out, out of another machine that we've got here. And we will, uh, yeah, there's, there's the motherboard sitting on top of the box. And then we've been trial fitting it inside the case uh, and realized that we're going to have to modify the... Um, not only the, the uh, plate where the I.O. works, but we're going to have to modify a little bit where the cards pop out because we've got a clearance issue. You can see the, the, um, the audio connectors there, the, the two, uh, actually one, two, three, four, five, six of them, um, and the, the blue, green, and pink slightly overlap the side there to the right. So we're going to have to do some configurations there to make it fit right. But that's the, that's the portable PC build. That's where we are at the moment. So we will find out if, uh, if that's going to work. Uh, actually, it is going to work. It's just a matter of <laughs> can, do we have the patience to make it work um, without, uh, without throwing it all in the scrap heap. So that's it for today we i, I commend to you vid blasters uh, uh new beta the beta is uh, version 3.34 uh, i think the screen capture actually came out in 3.30 or 3.31 but it hasn't been out that long take a good look at that keep an eye out for the upcoming contest where we're going to be giving away something cool and uh, upcoming interviews with uh, uh, ted kasmirzak from tally lights and the folks at live to air and then we'll have updates on our PC build. So quite a bit of stuff that we tried to cram in today. Sorry, we went over time a little bit. But uh, if you're watching us live, please st stick around. Um, Rod is going to be uh, letting us sample some of his uh, special peanut brittle in the virtual green room in between uh, shows. And after that, we're going to have another segment uh, of uh, Streaming Idiots. So uh, thanks for watching. Again, subscribe on YouTube. And, uh, oh, you know, and I forget, i I've got to give you the caveat. I'm a licensed, not licensed, I'm an authorized VidBlaster reseller. And uh, if you need VidBlaster or want to upgrade VidBlaster, I can help you with that. And we build custom streaming boxes for VidBlaster. And we'd be happy to help you with that, too. So, Tom Sinclair, that VidBlaster guy, shoot me an email if I can help in any way. Look forward to seeing you on a, uh, what would you call it, I guess, a future, uh, a, a future episode, and uh, so so take care, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.